So today I'm going to review this BenQ IdeaCam S1 Pro webcam, professional grade sort of thing. This is an intelligent conference camera right in the box. I did show this briefly in the mailbag, I'll just have a quick look at it and now we're going to actually do the proper review on it. Two options of this thing, there's one with or without a controller. This one is the Pro version which has the controller with it as well. So we've got a little magnifier here so you can actually do some really close up camera views which is interesting, it's a unique feature. We've got a bracket here, got a rubber piece here, it's got a locking piece so if you want to lock the hinge to hold it on you can do that. It's got a threaded coupling which is only on one side interestingly so you can put that on a tripod and then this post will go onto the camera. I think you have to stand it kind of like this. Yeah, I don't know, we'll play with the angles and stuff and see what we can actually do. I think it's basically meant for going on your monitor, so you hook this on the top of your screen, hook onto here like that, and then rest against the back of it like that. And here we have the actual camera. I've had to play with this already. There's a lens cap, so if you want to secure your privacy, you can put the little magnetic lens cap on. It's magnetic. We've also got this little lens here, which I said before, that's also magnetic. So that's an interesting feature, so I haven't come across something like that before. That's interesting. So we'll be looking at that. USB-A, standard sort of thing. It's got two buttons illumination and something else I'm not sure and there's the little slot in the bottom there so now we're going to there like that that's how you mount it which means you can actually very easily take off the bracket and move it around which is part of the intention of the design I'll cover that shortly naturally I have already played around this thing a little bit and had a bit of a try out I've got some interesting results from that one part we got here is the controller here it's got like a jog wheel effect there that's a nice little wheel which feels really nice it's just Dead smooth, that's beautifully smooth, it's incredible. And we've got some buttons on here as well to control it. We've got some batteries and a dongle for the remote, because this is wireless or Bluetooth or something. And that's all that's in that box. In here we have a little quick start guide, the Inspire website thing. That's part of the usage of this thing, so you can actually view it on a browser and stuff like that. And it's got some other bits and pieces in here too. And So part of the feature set of this, as I said, is to use it as a conference camera. And it's got some special features for that. And you run the software on a computer and you can then use it for conferencing and it's got some special features and effects which you also then use this thing with. So you've got controls here, autofocus, manual focus, audio on and off, and some other things, and camera, and say, the jog wheel. This has also a magnetic, well I do like the magnets. It's all magnetic, they've done that really nicely. And so you put the batteries in there. I would demonstrate this to you, but there's a slight problem. I use a Mac. Now that wouldn't be a problem because there is a Mac version. The problem is, my Mac's a bit too old for this. I needed iOS 13, something like that, anyway. I can't exactly now. I'll show you on the screen when I go to the computer. And I can't do that version on my machine. My machine doesn't support that version of operating system. It's too new. Because my computer's the 2013 Mac Pro. None of my computers are new enough to actually run that software. Which is a shame, because I really want to try this thing out. Obviously, if you had it on a PC, it wouldn't be a problem, I think, because it does Windows 10, Windows 11, and what have you. So I think that's fine. You can use it on Windows, no issue whatsoever. But as is usual, Macs have a bit of a problem. <laughs> There's certain restrictions that end up getting put in place. And so, although this is nice, it looks like it was something which could be really useful. I can't use it, which also means, unfortunately, I can't review this part of it because I don't have the means to do so. It's a real shame. I was hoping the Mac software would work on it, but it turns out it doesn't. I've tried to do it, but I wouldn't allow me to install it. So, And then the little dongle thing can also be pushed in here too. So you can keep that in there with your batteries. And this actually has got like a power save mode. I'll show you actually. I'll put the batteries in. So it sits at idle until you do something or push a button or whatever you're doing. All right. So this is now active. Now I've tried to see if I can see a connection from this on my computer and uh, you obviously need the software. It wouldn't recognize as a keyboard or anything like that. I did try that, it didn't, it didn't work as a keyboard so that was not an option either, unfortunately. So I'd love to review this part of it and actually demonstrate this. Put it on upside down, goes that way up. But unfortunately I can't, that's a real shame. Okay, so we've got that bit there which we, unfortunately we cannot look at. Now obviously you've got the actual camera itself, we've got a nice long cable on it. I'm not quite sure how long it actually is. One point five meters. Angles for the mount. Let's have a look at these before we go on to and actually do some actual tests on the computer. When it's sitting on the desk, you can do these angles. Okay, there is no rotation. It's only tipping. That's all you can do. Tilting. The problem is there's no rubber mat on this part. There's rubber grip on this bit, but there's no rubber grips on this bit. If you've got this on the surface, this will move around. If you try and move the cable, it's going to move as well. Now I did actually try this camera out myself on my setup the other day. I was just you know, playing around for a little bit and I found that because this doesn't have a rubber mat on it I was getting it moving around a lot that's a little thing which is a bit of a bug to me to put rubber on here but they probably should have put rubber on the back as well because it's 
allows for a different usage case. If you've got it sitting on the desk. Obviously the stand allows you to sit on the desk. Obviously it's mainly designed around sitting on the back of a monitor. So you have it on your back of your monitor like that or whatever. And then you can tip it. It doesn't tip back very far. Alright, so if it is on your monitor like that, that's as far back as it tips. Demonstrate on this. This is more like it, isn't it? So if you've got a monitor like that, it's okay. All right, it'll be fit, sitting fine. You can't tip it back very far. This any problem. You tip it down a lot, but you can't tip it back. That's as far back as it goes. So I think the bracket really could have been done very slightly differently. If I had designed this, I would have done it very slightly differently. Definitely. The other problem is obviously you can't rotate it. So if your monitor's not dead square with you, then you, you may be out of shot. So I think I would have put like a post here or something, a round post with a pivot point. So having a square post, have a round post with a round hole. Then you could pivot the camera as well. That would have been better, having a round hole and a round post. That's just me being picky. That's one of the things I found when I set this camera up the other day. I couldn't put it on top of the monitor because I'm off angle to the monitor. And it meant I was off the side of the shot. I wasn't in the center of the frame. I was off to one side by quite a lot. To me, this bracket system is a limitation. It's not well thought out in that way, I think. It's just nice and solid and robust. It all feels really high quality. But the design, I'm not so keen on that, that way. I think it would have been a lot better if it was just a round post with a round hole on the camera. So then when the camera's on top of it, you could pivot it round and angle it to, you know, to off to one side. You can't do that with this. So to me, that's a bit of a limitation about design. I mean, they could have designed it a bit better. Which is a shame because, I mean, everything feels beautiful quality. This is incredibly good quality. That feels really nice. The camera feels beautiful, all right? Everything feels like it's top quality. And it's just a shame about that little bit of a design. In my point of view, in my use case, it mattered. Other people may not matter at all. In my situation, I need to pivot sideways. <laughs> so, you know, it's a bit of a shame. Missed opportunity there. So this has been given to me at no cost by BenQ for purpose of review. So this is my benefit to this is that I get to keep this thing. Full disclaimer. So I got it for free. So thank you a lot BenQ for sending this to me at no cost. That's brilliant. Check out the links down below. The links down to BenQ's website for purchase links and what have you. And for more information. And here's some basic information on the camera. It's got all that switch mode apparently. Um, that's part of the thing here I think. Um, three camera mode. You can look at documents which is what this piece is for. All right. So I haven't actually covered that yet. I should talk about that. So this allows you to magnify on documents. So I'll show you that on the computer when I do that part. You can put this on like a document and, and like get a close view of it with this magnifier. It's like a macro lens sort of thing. That's worth a look, I suppose. Noise reduction for the audio. I haven't tried the audio on this thing yet. I should try that. It does up to 3264 by 2448 pixels at 30 frames per second. No, it's a 2448p. It's like 2K or something, I don't know. Um, I, someone can probably tell me in the comments down below. Chuck it in the comments down below if you want to work it out. You know about video stuff better than I do. It's ironically that I make videos, anyway. It's got 8 megapixel Sony CMOS sensor, 15 times magnifying lens, which is what this thing is, and remote control, which is what this thing is, and it has a privacy shade, which is what this thing is. Let's go and plug this thing into the computer, and we'll go and look at it on the screen, and do a screen capture. Look at the web interface on it because I've got like a browser interface. You can use it through the Inspire website and it gives you a browser view. Although, I don't say in my case, it's very limited. I can't use software, which is what I'd like to do. I'd use the software with the camera, which would be the ideal situation. I can't do that. So, all I can really show you is the web interface and how that part of it works. So, we're going to do that. So, one of the things that got mentioned is the ability to move this camera around and use this as a handheld camera, which you can, which is what I'm doing right now. But then you can do that with any webcam, really, can't you? Apart from one that's built into your screen or computer, it's a bit hard for that. So here I am just showing the box. Now we've got this little lens thing here, which I haven't shown you yet. This is the little 15 times macro lens, and this has an auto focus. So let's put this little macro lens on. There it is. And then you can get really close to things, which is what this is for. Right, so you want to look at something really close up. This is basically on the surface of the box. You can see the, the dots on the print, how they make the print up. That's what that is before, but you can't get too far away. This is one centimetre away there, it's already starting to get blurry. So it's basically, that's like five millimetres or so, just there. But if you're trying to examine something closely, this would be really good for that. We couldn't do this normally with another camera. So this is a unique feature for this. There may be use cases for this. Personally, I think this is too close. Here's my watch. Close up view of my watch. That gives you an idea of scale as well. It's okay for looking at fine detail, but other than that, probably not. And if I take that off, can we focus at this distance without it? So about there. That is probably about 10 centimeters away. 
10 centimeters away that's all right I mean you could use it like that as well so here's the webcam running now now this is with no extra lighting I've got a window next to me here which is bringing lighting from the side this room isn't that bright okay it's a fairly dark room because it's just this window here normally when I'm doing live stream and things like that I've got a lot of extra lighting running and I'll demonstrate that in a minute I'll go through I'll turn my usual lights on and show you how that looks under brighter lighting okay so you can see it a lot better I'm using my own microphone right now which is the Blue Yeti so the audio you're getting isn't from the BenQ it's from my normal stream mic so I'm going to change over mics so you can hear the difference between my normal streamer mic and the BenQ mic now the BenQ mic is just over an arm's length I don't know is that a meter maybe so that's how far away I am from the camera so I'm going to demonstrate comparison between my normal camera which is not great under these lighting conditions you'll see that in a second and the audio as well so let's do the audio first then I can waffle on about other things so you can get the idea of the audio itself let's change mics so I'm now on the BenQ mic it may be quieter it's quite possible it'll be quieter because it's further away and you may hear some clicking and noises as well in the background that isn't the microphone it's no audio problems it's purely my equipment here I've got a NAS which runs on literally only for shelf this camera's on well, I've got a NAS sitting right here behind the screen so it's likely you hear some noises from the NAS I can't do much about that it's just doing some stuff right now hopefully the audio doesn't sound too bad I don't know I haven't actually listened to it myself yet I'll find out when I play this back myself so this is the audio from the BenQ and I think it'd be an interesting comparison I'll change back to my other mic and I'm back at my other mic again as I would normally be using which is say is going to be a lot louder so because it's louder it's going to sound better so what I actually might do is bring this level down a bit to get it closer to the level I'm seeing on the BenQ right so I spring it down to about here and that's about the same sort of level as the BenQ right it's a very similar level so I'm going to talk here for a little bit obviously my level would have dropped quite a bit to you but I want to give a comparison between the two microphones quite well now I'm back on the BenQ microphone again and you'll see you can probably hear the comparison between the two tonal accuracy that kind of thing is probably what you'll listen for you may get a bit more echo maybe it may not be quite so crisp because it is a bit further away but this is a kind of a distance you would potentially be using it at anyway so it's still a real representation of what it could be like so i'm going to go back to my normal microphone which i know normally sounds okay i don't know what this one sounds like yet and i'm going to bring the level back up to where i'm normally running which is up here somewhere like this now we can look at the camera comparison and lighting I'm going to show you the camera comparison before I change the lighting. So I'm going to switch cameras now. This is my Logitech C922 with auto white balance and these lighting conditions. As you can see, it's a bit bad. Now, under my system, the Logitech stuff, the program is really glitchy. It's at 10.12 or whatever it is. Oh, I need to look now because I keep forgetting. OS 12. So you need OS 13 to use the software for this camera. Right, so OS 12 is the newest I can use on this machine. So this is what it's on. But on OS 12, the Logitech software is basically garbage. And I have to launch the software to stop this camera from glitching. This camera will just do like one frame every five seconds. Unless I launch the program. And then it gives me trouble. With, it goes to narrow screen instead of wide screen. And changes the refresh rate. And the white balance, as you can see right now, is pretty bad. But that's auto white balance. I'm not changing it, even though it's bad. Okay. Because I'm trying to give a real one to one comparison between what these two cameras perform like. So, Logitech and the BenQ under the same lighting conditions. BenQ far outstrips the Logitech by far. So, let's now change the lighting. I'm going to stop this recording. I'll change the lighting, come back, and then you can see a comparison under my normal web stream lighting. Okay, I'm back. So, I've now set my lighting up. I've turned basically my overhead lighting on. I'll turn that on. And I've turned on. I've got like a strip light sits this here, which I can probably get in shot actually. There we go. Like this little strip light like this. I set this up just off here, so it got some kind of light in my face, and that's what I'm using now. That's what I normally use for my web streams is that and the overhead light, and this is still looking fine. Now if I switch back to Logitech for comparison, like that. As you can see, Logitech now looks a lot better. Still doesn't look great, but it looks a lot better. It's handling the lighting a lot better. Changing the lighting from outside as well will change things. So I'm going to change the blinds. And if I get a little bit more light in like that, that probably helps Logitech slightly, okay? Very slightly. I'm going to go back to the BenQ. And here we go, back on the BenQ. There's a comparison. BenQ, Logitech, BenQ, Logitech. I know which one I prefer. It's the BenQ. <laughs> it's a lot better. 
Now the BenQ also has its own little light on it. So I'm going to turn this light here off. I'm going to turn the light on the BenQ. Go to the correct camera first. So back on the BenQ. Yeah, so that distance didn't do much. I did see a slight change, but not much. Yeah, you can't see much there going on. If I close this blind a little bit more like I had before when I started out, I'm going to turn this other light off. So this should be basically how we started out before, same kind of lighting. Now let's change the light on here. Now you can see it change very slightly. So if I was in an even darker environment, blinds are basically shut now, right? So now this is doing the majority of the lighting. Obviously my screens are on, so you're going to be doing a bit of lighting as well. Um, you can see it's gone a bit grainy. And I'll turn this light off. It didn't want to turn off. I think it was trying to automatically compensate. So you can see it's quite grainy now, right? But that's with a really dark room, actually. It's quite dark because the blinds are shut. So it's actually doing really well. Let me show you the Logitech. Logitech actually likes a darker environment. As you can see, the Logitech is doing quite well now. It's a bit of an interesting situation. But this is Logitech. This is the BenQ. Now, in this situation, you know, in a really dark room, the Logitech's doing slightly better. This is Logitech. This is BenQ. So, lighting's important. Now, let's open this blinds very slightly. You can see now, I'm on the BenQ still. Just got a little bit of light. It's just a fraction more. It shifted by quite a bit. So, let's do Logic again. And now, you can see the colours changing. Alright. So, it depends a lot on how much lighting you're coming in. And how harsh the light is. Alright, so lighting is incredibly important when it comes to these sorts of things. And this is on Logic, obviously. And this is the BenQ. Alright, that's enough of that part. Let's look at the Inspire website and check that stuff out. Here's a screen view up the top here. So this is my screen view. And obviously I've done a minimized camera view of the BenQ. And allow the camera. So yes, I want to allow the camera in this case. That's the whole point of coming here. And there we go. So saying it's detected it. That's fine. So this is the website. As you can see, we can see the camera just fine. Lag. No real lag showing up there. It's really quick. It must be done locally. We've got settings and stuff in here. We'll come down to settings on the bottom left first. In fact, what I might do is hide my um, miniature me. Mini me. You can see that then. Settings here. So you've got source settings. You can choose the camera. I've got a few different cameras and input sources here, so they're all showing up. And microphone source as well is detecting those too. So that's that part of it. Do portrait mode and high quality and demo mode, which is something else. Let's close that. Image settings. So you can choose resolutions. As you can see, it does that really high resolution. And we can scale that down and just fill it better and, and reduce data usage and stuff like that. Like a talking head video sort of thing, you probably use 1280 and it'd be absolutely fine. So having a high resolution is good if you've got the means to do so. You've got the bandwidth and data usage on your internet connection and stuff like that. Modern day times a lot of people do. I don't. I live rurally and I have a wireless internet connection. 1080p is probably be what I'd be doing if I was doing anything with this because my ball band connection is not that fast. So I could change that and it will rescale the camera, it will do stuff or mainly in, in software and what have you, but that's, that's how you change that. Um, filters, you've got some filters here to do different effects. You want to do different effects to the screen or for some reason you may want to do this. I don't know why you'd want to. Um, yeah, I, I don't get the point of that. Honestly, I don't get the point. Why would you do that? Why do you have a high quality camera and then destroy the image with filters. We've got this button up here. The picture in picture screen, split screen, main source obviously is this camera here. We could always change it to C922, which is this thing, which is, as you can see, is now glitching. All right? That's exactly what I'm talking about. The C922 is just not good. <laughs> so let's go back to that. And we'll look, we're back again. Portrait mode. 
um, doesn't seem to change anything in this situation and demo mode also doesn't change anything you got these buttons over here this is for drawing on the screen and things like that so if you want to draw things like hmm, no, I'm a circle around it if you want to erase it again so if you're doing like presentation stuff this would be really good for that and that would be a useful thing I'm sure and you've got options for like the eraser size and auto clean maybe right so if you want to do something like that you can do that that's quite nice nice little feature so if you want to do presentations and you want to enhance things and show what you're doing it's nice go over here yep. different options here so camera which is what we're doing now so I'll do that what does that do I don't know no idea I think it saved the screenshot I just saw it download something so I think it saved a still of the screen when I did that so it's like a camera like it says so video let's click that and it's now recording video so it's recording a capture or will record a capture when I start it I guess how do I get back out of that hmm okay <laughs> scanner so we can scan something so if you want to scan a document I suppose confirm I guess it's a scan when you actually activate it so if I do this and then scan that isn't that much like a screenshot though I wonder if it can OCR that. I don't know. No idea. <laughs> it's got a QR scanner as well. So if you've got a QR code somewhere. There you go. QR code scanner works. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> There's obviously situations where you probably want to use that and do stuff with it. I, I don't know what. So obviously right now this is just a loop back to my own computer so there's not much point in what I'm doing <laughs> and over here we have audio mute and allow which is obviously when you're using the streaming feature of the software maybe or or the actual mic built into this unit I'm not sure so that's all I can do right now is this site this is it to me right now this is like no benefit I can't really do much with this um, because my system is just too old if I had the ability to run a new assistant software on this machine, I would be for a start. And I would be able to make use of the software which comes available for this thing for doing proper streaming and stuff with it. Unfortunately, I'm a bit limited. Have I missed anything? The focusing. The auto focusing. You always need to see what that's like, don't you? All right? So, obviously, this distance here. Hold this up. How quickly does it change focus? Not too badly. Lighting's a bit dim, so it's probably not helping. Let's put some lighting on. And maybe I'll turn the internal light on as this as well. So it's got oh, plenty of light. Okay, so that already looks a lot better straight away. A bit, hang a bit of lighting on. But right now you can see it's not quite focused. It didn't quite refocus correctly. See, I'm looking a bit blurry. Interestingly, I'm blurring all the way. Hmm, okay, now it's come right because I moved. Let's do this. Is it going to focus on that? Some some cameras like the C92 is terrible for focus. It really doesn't want to do it. All right, so I'm not quite sure what triggers this to focus. Is it enough detail in the shot? Is it enough of the shot being covered? Now I'm actually wondering if I'm pushing on the button on this. Don't know. Is that focusing now? That's not refocusing. Really Have I done something silly here? I'm not quite sure where the light doesn't always come on straight away. So focusing was working, now it's working again. So have I somehow turned on manual focusing? I haven't read the manual. Maybe there's a way of doing manual focusing on this camera and that's what I've just did then, which is why it's all going wacky. Let's try this again. That is not focusing. Or maybe not, I don't know. There's something going on there which means it gets confused. Right now I'm not in focus. You see now it's refocused on me. That's great. That's what it's supposed to do. I'll sit back. Does it refocus? Yes. Stick this box up. Yes. It's focused on that. So, and it refocused again. So it, it does kind of do it, but it's a little bit quirky. Now, I don't know if there's a newer firmware version for this camera or not. There may be. Unfortunately, the firmware downloads are on Windows. So, 
to update the firmware on this camera, I need to be running Windows, and I'm on a Mac. So I can't update the firmware on this camera either. Even if there's a newer version, which may be better, with less bugs in it, it's possible. Actually, the download of the C did mention focusing changes, so maybe these slight quirks I'm seeing now have already been fixed, it's possible. But because I can't update the firmware, um, I can't fix it. Another thing, you know, another limitation. Why don't I have a firmware updater for Mac? And even a Mac version which I can run. <laughs> I mean, the camera itself looks nice. It, it's got good image quality. I really like the, the resolution and like that. So, these are limitations of being on a Mac, which is that you can't update the firmware and you can't run the software with it if you're on an older system like I am. I'm on OS 12. I can't run that system. It, um, it requires OS 13 for their software to run on this. So I would have liked to do more, you know, covering the remote control system and their whole interface they've got, but unfortunately, I can't do it. I think that kind of covers the review as much as I can do. It's a shame I can't review this part and the actual Mac software and what have you. It's a real shame I couldn't do that. I really wanted to do that, but unfortunately the software doesn't support my computer. It's just, you probably have a much newer computer than mine and you'll probably be fine. You, you load the software up and use it. I expect you won't have any issues, but I have an older machine, so YouTube doesn't pay me well enough to be able to buy a brand new Mac Pro. I wish it did. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Thanks for being here for sending this to me at no cost. That's brilliant. Appreciate the support. Check out the links down below for these things. The links down to BeanQ's website for purchase links and what have you, and for more information. So go and check those out. Catch you later.